tutorial today on coloring white. What on earth was that? Oh my gosh, that was 2013 me. Yes, in 2013, I was under the impression that in order to get clicks on a video, you had to dress up in all kinds of crazy things just to get people to watch what you were creating as an artist. And why does my scarf have a pocket? What is that? Anyway, I don't have to dress up in crazy things anymore because I'm an artist and I get to just show you the art. But for my 10th anniversary, all month long during August, I have been sharing redos of some older projects. And I thought it would be fun to go back to 10 years ago this month and find this video on making white bears. Because Sunny Studio Stamps is celebrating their eighth birthday, they get to dress up in another two years and celebrate their 10th, but they're celebrating eight and they sent me this really cute little stamp. As soon as I saw this bear, I knew I had to color him. So I'm gonna to talk today about different ways, different mediums, different things you can do to make your fuzzy bears look white and fuzzy because you know you're gonna be doing some for your Christmas cards. So let's get going. Now, of course, to make a thick white polar bear, you need a thick white polar bear. You need a stamp or you need to make your own drawing. And this little stamp is so cute, but He's got lots of different things you can put in his arms so he can hold cupcakes and gifts and all kinds of things for different winter holiday celebrations that you might have an opportunity to make a card with this from. And I'm going to stamp him in a no-line ink. You can do that with another ink color that's just really light and stamp it. I'm using my mini Misty to do that. Then I went to pick out colors. I wanted to pick out the strong color first because I wanted something punchy for the scarf and other elements. So I used, you know, this really kind of purplish red color with a shadow color that's two hexagons over on the hex chart. And this is from Sketch Marker. So, you know, picking that out as my main contrast color to all that white fur was important. Then I needed nose colors. So I need an NG2, which is you know, I guess equivalent in Copic would be like an eight and then the black to go with it. So I can do black nostrils and have them show up on that dark gray. And then I picked out two light grays. In this case, it's a seven and a nine. In a Copic, it would be like a zero and a two, something like that, that as the equivalent. And then I wanted to have some pencils to go with it because in order to make all this work, adding pencil that you can control more is one of the ways that you can get some fur looking furry. So I wanted to first follow up on the red and I couldn't find something on my Prismacolor hex chart that was gonna be that kind of red. I found some that had more of a purple flavor but they were actually purple purple. They didn't feel like a maroon red. So I switched over to the Polychromos chart to see if there was something suitable there and found a color that was perfect for it. It just matched exactly. I do know I'm blessed to have both brands here in the studio, but you can make it work with others. I was just looking for the perfect color. And then I wanted to find something to add pencil to all that gray fur. And in Polychromos, my options were more limited. They have a smaller number of grays. So I was looking through the grays, didn't really find anything. I'm looking for more of a blue gray. They have a green gray that wasn't going to do anything for me. But guess what? Prismacolor has a couple options. There's these two down here at the bottom. One is more of a lighter blue, the other is a darker blue, but they're very much blue grays, which are gonna keep that wintry feel, as well as give me some option to kind of make some really nice texture in there for my bear. If you're looking for more information on how to use your hex chart, then you can head over to art-classes.com where there's now a brand new class. And I show you examples in both marker brands and in pencil brands for each of the topics that gets taught. So that might be of interest to some of you who have used your hex chart, but really don't know the power that you can find in that little chart. 
So to start off with, I'm going with the second to the lightest of the grays. I'll refer to it that way in case you're in your mind translating your brand's numbers. This is a, the second to the lightest of the choices that I had made. And then I'll use the lighter to soften out the edges. And right now I'm just setting in some color so that I leave the whites white. The, and I mean the super whites. You might think of the whole bear as white, but he's not completely white. And then I'm using the pencil to draw back in some of the elements that have disappeared. I'm creating, you know, a little snout shape around the nose and mouth section. When you're talking about something like a bear that seems kind of flat, there's a lot of stamps that don't draw in a little snout section. It really is helpful to do that. I'm even drawing in some eyebrows. Now, don't make them too prominent or he'll look like, you know, Groucho Marx or something. But I'm using the pencil to do that so that it'll stay nice and soft. And once we start adding in contrast, even though you might start feeling like, oh my gosh, this is so dark on a white bear, it's going to lighten by comparison. So I promise you it will be okay in the long run. So I'm going to use a very, very fine pen, just a Copic multi-liner, to draw the eyes back in. And then the nose, that dark gray that isn't quite black that I wanted to have in here. Because what I want to do is divide the nose into sections. Bears have really giant nostrils. And putting those in starts to give the nose a little bit of just a, a little bit of shape to it rather than just being a blob. And then I'm using that you know, slate gray pencil to start adding in a bit of highlight up on the top of the nose. And that gives the whole face a little more realistic uh, features to it rather than just being a simple nose blob. Now I'm using my marker, this is the lighter marker, right on top of the pencil. And I know a lot of people freak out about that, but if you scribble off your marker, you should be fine coloring over, especially a very light color with a light pencil. You may get some discoloration on the marker itself, but in general, it's not going to last and like harm the color of the marker coming out of the pen. So should be fine, but it does melt down the, the pencil a little bit and soften it. And that gives more options. You know, you get the sharp edges of pencil detail and the soft blending of marker. I'm using Nina cardstock for this, which is great for alcohol markers, but it's not as great for pencil. Pencil is a little bit of a fight on paper like this, whereas pencil loves something softer like Stonehenge. And marker doesn't like Stonehenge as much, but you can use it. So you could do the same kind of thing where you get more paper texture showing through if you use a Stonehenge as the base, even if it's not as friendly with the marker. The marker has a little drag on it, but the pencil will sing more because it has more of that, um, that texture to play with. In this particular one, since I knew I was going to have that big background that I'll create in this card, I didn't want to fight that for the whole thing, so I chose to go with the paper that was going to work best with the alcohol markers. So now I'm going to start putting in that punchy red, and I began by adding mittens because, you know, he's a polar bear, and maybe he's cold. I don't know if polar bears get cold. Probably not. I think they have, do they have blubber. I don't know what they have to keep them warm. They have all this warm fur, of course, but who knows whether or not it's as cold as it used to be in the North Pole because the planet is warming. So maybe he doesn't need his gloves, but I'm going to assume he does. The color that I chose for the shadows was not as great here. It was not as strong as I had hoped it would be. So I added in another color here for my, my coloring, which is a mid-tone gray. And then I'm going to soften it out a bit with the lighter grays, just adding the shadows overall. Now I probably should have added that gray all along the entire scarf first and then gone over it with the red, probably would have been easier. And then use that same gray that I used for the nose to add the deepest, darkest shadows on all of the red bits. So the bottom of the scarf, I made a crease in the scarf as it wrapped around him. 
that sort of thing, and then added some shading onto the mittens. But since that felt very black, I went in with a pencil then to not only blend some of that black so that it, it kind of looks more like a dark reddish color, but I'm also going around the edges of all the fuzzy things because the fuzzy things can be made fuzzier with pencil. It's a lot harder to do that in markers, but just going around the edges makes that just feel fuzzier all over. And who doesn't like to have a nice fuzzy scarf on? Well, at least in the winter. In the winter, it's nice to have a fuzzy, thick, soft scarf. Not so much at this time of year because, yeah, it's a little hot. I did use a bit of white to brighten up some of the highlights. I didn't want to make it look pinkish. I still wanted the mittens to feel like they're that, that kind of nice maroon sort of color. And then at the ends of each of the scarves, I could put the little strings from the yarn. And if I use my pencil, I can make them scribbly so they look very much like yarn and give them that sort of texture instead of just straight lines like you'll get in a stamp. You can use a pencil to add in any details needed in the nose to clean things up. And he's looking fairly good, not great, because he's still got that outline that doesn't look fuzzy. So we need to figure out how to handle that. As I often do, I decided a background was going to be good and creating some negative drawing around the bear to just make some scribbly lines around the outside of him because that's going to make him look fuzzy and then the dark color around him is going to make him look white. Now the dark color could be purple, it could be blue, it could be whatever you want. I made mine green in this particular instance, but any color would work. And then I can go along those edges that I created and use the pencil to soften them up and make them look fuzzy-ish. Now the, there's some transitional things that the pencil can't overcome. You see there's kind of like a light green line now almost around it. And I didn't really want to just leave it with that. But I also know I have art supplies. So I got out the gouache. Now gouache is an opaque watercolor and you can paint right over top of your coloring with it to add some white highlights. And I went around the whole bear around the outside and just added a few strokes here and there so that there were some definite white lines and I could break up any of the areas that the pencil didn't look great on. You saw I also added some highlights on the nose and I can add some decor on the mittens that I drew in, just a star for some snowflakes and then paint snowflakes in the sky itself. Just random shapes makes them look like they're those really big fat flakes that you end up, you know, catching on your tongue in the winter when it's snowing. My favorite kind of snow when it's nice and big like that. And, you know, you can just splooge it on with your brush because that's going to make it look more like snowflakes when it's just kind of random and weird. And then I cut the hands. I just used my knife to cut around the little mittens and tucked in the cupcake that I colored. You can tuck in any anything you want to put in there. And then I added glossy accents, which is a liquid adhesive, and sprinkled on glitter. Yes, I used glitter. I know there are people that know how much I don't like glitter, but on a cupcake, it just seemed appropriate. So I did it. So there you go. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you learned something, please do click the like button. And even if you didn't learn something, click it because my goodness, I'm wearing a scarf like this when it's as hot as it is where I live. Isn't that worth even just a share to your friends? I will see you guys later. Check all the links in the doobly-doo for all the things we discussed, and I'll see you later in the next video.